Quite a devious thank you for joining us. You're watching our weekly program, Talk to OBN on uh, OBN uh, Horn of Africa, your uh, favorite media channel. In this edition, we, we're going to discuss about works being undergone by the uh, International Labour Organization. And uh, Ms. Aida Awal uh, is a technical advisor, Better Regional Migration Management, BRMM program, International Labour Organization. Uh, Country Office for Ethiopia, Djibouti, Somalia, Sudan, South Sudan. Ms. Aida, thank you for your time. Thanks for having me here. To begin with, can you precisely tell me about your profile, your posters in IL or briefly? Uh, sure. My name is Aida Awol, as you rightly said. It. Uh, I'm the Chief Technical Advisor for a regional program called uh, Better Regional Migration Management Program which uh, look at the broader perspective of labor migration in general. And uh, yeah, I'm based here in Addis Ababa. Okay. Uh, can you again enlighten us about major mandates of ILO, or precisely about uh, this country office? Well, the mandate of the ILO globally is the same. Uh, it's one of the, uh, as you know, ILO is a normative organization. So our major work is in terms of developing the different international labor standards that you see apply everywhere in the world, including Ethiopia. Um, so our role is normative, as I said, and of course we support different countries to ratify uh, the, uh, the conventions are, or the labor standards are developed, of course, with the participation of all ILO member states, uh, employers, workers, and government. As you know, ILO is a tripartite organization, so we have all the relevant stakeholders in the world of work. Wow. So, yeah. And we, we work towards implementation of those conventions at, at different countries. Okay, you, you said uh, the ILO is a tripartite organization. Uh, it acts as a catalyst between workers, uh, employers and government organizations. Uh, can you brief us on that as well? The ILO is basically managed by workers, government and employers organization. So all this convention, as I was saying, ratified by the ILO is basically is the three, the tripartite partners coming together and uh, developing the policy, but as well as the ratification of the convention. Awesome. Okay. Among your posters, Better Regional Migration Management Program is the one. So what does it exactly mean? Uh, we work in Djibouti, Ethiopia. Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, South Sudan, um, so the seven countries. But we also work at uh, country level interventions. Uh, we work at sub-regional level, as in the East African uh, community, with East African community, and of course, IGAD. But we also work, at, uh, uh, work with the AU in certain initiatives. The program looks at improving labor migration governance in the region. For, for the protection of migrant workers. Uh, we focus in three intervention area. Our first intervention area looks at more labor migration statistics in terms of in, to ensure evidence-based policy making so that we have the right data information in terms of statistics. The second component looks at uh, skills. So in terms of upskill, skills development, upskilling, reskilling of migrant workers and returnees and potential migrant workers as well as we look at reintegrating return migrant workers. As you know, this, there's a lot of returnees in this region as well, including in Ethiopia. We do provide support in that regard. Uh, to a lesser extent, we work on extension of social protection for migrant workers as well. Uh, and the third component looks at um, more of, as I was saying, on the ratification of convention on development of labor migration policy and designing, but as well as implementation of these policies at the different country level. Well, ILO is mandated to advance social and economic justice through setting up a labor standard. I mean, this labor standard always click with ILO. Whenever we see bros, everything, repeatedly we hear, we see labor standard. What does it mean by labor standard as a discourse? As I was saying, uh, ILO is a normative organization. That's our major role in developing this labor standard you're talking about. We do, for example, when we talk about minimum wage, when we talk about the world in, in, in working hours, when we talk about the protection of migrant workers, whatever we're 
implementing at the country level is based on those standards we have set at the global level. So, of course, different countries do ratify the conventions, but of course there's the fundamental conventions which all member states of the ILO uh, must have ratified or uh, would ratify. Uh, but um, it's implementing those standards is our basically day-to-day -day job. Okay, uh, Ethiopia, Sudan, South Sudan, Somalia, and Djibouti uh, are where you intervene, right? Uh, this uh, area, no, and beyond that, for beyond the better that, regional right? migration mm -hmm. management, beyond that. Exactly, yeah. but uh, the profile over here says uh, either uh, this ILO. That's the country office. Country office, yeah, country office for Ethiopia, Djibouti, yes. Sudan, Somalia. Uh, South Sudan, uh, this region is very prone to migration and uh, can you okay. tell as I mean, challenges regarding flow of migration? Sure, uh, yes, it's definitely a migrant prone uh, region, uh, one of the major labor sending country, uh, countries I think in Africa, uh, mostly is in this part of the region, especially of course migration to the Gulf. The major challenge uh, in terms of migration from this region and uh, maybe in particular Ethiopia is the there's a lot of uh, irregular mobility so the migration is not always regular so that's one of the major challenge one it of course is difficult for government of a region or transit or destination to control that migration because they don't it's, they're not aware of it usually because it's irregular as you know, usually it's managed by traffickers, uh, smugglers, and, and which is a very strong network they do have. So that's one of the uh, challenges, but also more so, um, it put the migrants in a very vulnerable situation because they cannot access, for example, uh, services, they cannot access uh, protection uh, from the local authority because usually once they migrate irregularly, they have a fear, of course, of being caught, being deported back to their country of origin. So that puts them in a very vulnerable situation. Of course, not to say even the route, making it to the destination country is another big challenge. They might not make it. There, of course, uh, there is a lot of life being lost on the way as well. So that's some of the major challenge. But even if they do make it a destination country in terms of protection, uh, given that they have irregular status, makes it difficult. Of course, our international labor standard uh, stipulate that even in, in terms of where migrants is in irregular status, they should uh, get the protection. However, uh, most of the migrants does not even seek to get the support with the fear of deportation. So usually they're, they're put in a very uh, difficult situation. Well, uh, migration has got uh, this uh, pulling and pushing factor and uh, they're mainly their drivers to, to undertake or to engage in uh, this uh, migration. What are you really doing in addressing this uh, drivers in the very first place than reacting to, to after, after months of the action? Well, uh, for the ILO, as you know, um, migration is only one component of everything else. We do work on employment, on labor issues, uh, creating decent work opportunities for, my, uh, for we're all workers, not only migrant workers. So the uh, majority of the pushing factor from this region, of course, there is be beyond employment, lack of employment opportunities, unemployment, underemployment, is, the, I would say, the major driver. Of course, to a lesser extent, issues of conflict also affect some of our, the countries in our region. But a significant number of migrants uh, migrate due to la lack of opportunities, uh, be it uh, employment or uh, creating li uh, good, uh, better livelihood for themselves. So that's why they migrate. So in the ILO, of course, we do work in different uh, one, as I said, even in terms of uh, employment here, we work towards uh, creating decent working environment for my, uh, for workers uh, so that we do have a number of projects for example of course as you know Ethiopia is booming with industries we work a lot in the industries in, in Ethiopia to ensure that there's a uh, decent working conditions for for workers in the industrial parks uh, in terms of creating employment opportunities as well of course skills is what 
play a critical part in terms of uh, employment. And we do have a number of projects working on skills, working, uh, strengthening the capacity of the TVETs, well, of course, working at the policy level as well, having the right policy in place so that uh, um, the youth get his skill, uh, the relevant skills to acquire employment opportunities in their own country of origin as well. So uh, um, in different regards, most majority of our work is focused on employment and uh, employment creation. Um, as part of our work as well, of course, we do work on creating employment opportunities for, as I said, for potential migrants and uh, Returning, so we do provide, for example, access to finance so that they can start their own business. Uh, we also skill them to the, uh, based on the relevant um, sector they want to engage in. Um, we also work on refugees as well. Of course, uh, Ethiopia is a major uh, refugee ho uh, hosting uh, nation, so we do provide uh, support in terms of creating a livelihood opportunities even for refugees as well. So um, in that regard, we are, we are trying to address the driver. So I, we are trying to address the root cause for migration, which, as I said, is usually around so, uh, employment. Okay, obviously, uh, of course, there are many other organizations uh, which work in area of uh, migration and refugees. And can you tell me how you collab with with other organizations, mainly stakeholders? We, of course, uh, when it comes to migration, we wor work with multiple partners uh, because uh, the issue requires uh, multidisciplinary institutions. We are, for example, part of the National Partnership Coalition, which is led by the government of Ethiopia. In Ethiopia, we work with, uh, we're part of that, uh, that collaboration as well. So here and there, we do provide the support that is required of us. Within the UN system as well, we do have a UN network on migration, again, where all UN agencies working on migration come together. ILO is also a part and parcel of that, and actually we do chair one of the subcommittee which is on regular pathways, which is more on, focused on labor migration. Um, we also work with the local NGOs uh, working on migration. Uh, for example, we've, in terms of reintegrating return migrants, we've worked with local NGOs such as WISE, Live Addis, in the past we've worked with Agar, so a number of institutions. We also worked, work with private sector. For example, when we talk about access to finance, we work with banks or microfinance institutions. We don't uh, do it ourselves or we don't give out the cash ourselves, so we do work with private sector as well. Uh, of course, we will, uh, the government is critical uh, and uh, the major uh, partner, given, of course, that they have the responsibility to, to manage migration, uh, to govern migration. So we do provide the required support to the different government institutions. Okay, Horn of Africa, this part. Okay, Horn of Africa, this part of the world is, uh, as I have said, uh, prone to different. Uh, Things. Uh, let me uh, focus on Sudan. Uh, lately, Sudan has been in turmoil, conflict, right? There was overflow of migra migrants to neighboring countries. How do you handle that? Currently, uh, of course, there is a lot of uh, migration from Sudan to uh, uh, neighboring uh, countries, uh, such as South Sudan uh, and uh, other countries as well, of course, Ethiopia and others. Uh, we are uh, looking at possible opportunities. To, to, we do have a project uh, focusing on refugees in this country. Uh, we have a very big program called Prospect. It covers countries like Uganda, um, Sudan, Sudan, uh, Ethiopia, um, Kenya, and a number of countries. It's funded by the Dutch. Uh, as, I, as I was telling you earlier, we work towards creating livelihood opportunities for the refugees. So we do have that project being implemented and uh, also supporting the Sudanese refugees. How, how do you evaluate your performance in handling migration staff? Uh, we have just concluded an uh, independent evaluation, so it will be great to, to see the report before I respond. Because mm -hmm. I might be a roughly, bias, roughly anyway. But uh, we do pretty well, I would mm -hmm. say. We, we, at least in terms of uh, evaluating our delivery, reaching our target, mm -hmm. We pretty much are quite on the right track. Okay. Ministry of Labor and Skill is one of uh, the 
and the ministries uh, in Ethiopia, uh, I mean, coined lately. It's working on um, uh, creating good job opportunities, decent job, or maybe in a country and overseas. And how do you see this ambitious uh, ministry? Uh, they, it's, they are quite ambitious, I agree. And, uh, but they are also walking the talk. Uh, they, as you've seen, I mean, in the past, if you look at the media, I'm sure, which you follow, there's a lot of discussion, negotiation about bilateral labor agreements with different countries. In the past, most of it, the Ethiopian migrant work workers was kind of destined to go to the Gulf. Now, with the new ministry, you see that there's a lot of negotiation towards Europe, and in certain instances, of course, agreement reached as well. So, the, and of course, they're also uh, developing the right policies or regulations to implement this. Uh, they have gone totally digital, which is also another impressive and positive step forward, because uh, that's, uh, it's important to have that kind of digital platform. Uh, the ELMIS is, uh, of course, one of the, the ambition, uh, ambitious uh, plan of the ministry, which they have I will say implemented it uh, successfully, which within that ELMIS, there's also, of course, one of the subcomponents, the Ethiopian migrant data management system. So they do have a very reliable and uh, up to date data, at least in terms of regular migration, whether they would know which migrant where went to which country, who's the employer, all this in the tip of your fingerprint. Uh, so this is a very positive step forward. So it is ambitious, but um, if they continue to go at the pace they have been so far, uh, I'm sure they will uh, achieve uh, the result that, that they have set to it. Let me get back to this uh, Horn of Africa again. What makes unique this part of uh, the world uh, in terms of handling migration and uh, discharging your responsibilities and uh, major hurdles and challenges bottlenecks you, you, you've uh, witnessed so far in this part of the region? What makes it unique is I think uh, the geographical location I'll say. Uh, easily accessible for migrants to migrate anywhere uh, irregularly. Uh, so uh, I, I think it's, well, it's due to that we have significant migration out of this uh, region. But not, not so much out of this region, there's also a lot of migration within that region. As for the latest data, um, uh, East Africa is quite significant and 80% of uh, migration happened actually within the region as well. There's a lot of migration within the region, for example, Ethiopia is migrating to Kenya or Uganda and migrating to South Sudan. So there's a lot of migration within the region, of course, but what usually attracts attention is outside the region, whether if migrants is uh, exploited in the Gulf or if uh, uh, about this cup size on the way to, to Europe uh, attracts attention, but this, uh, my majority of the migration is within the region. Um, I will say the hurdle, as I said, I mean, the. Uh, geographical location can be uh, an advantage and disadvantage as well. Uh, as I said, disadvantage in terms of because all this irregular mobility is easier to, to, to whether it's to go towards the Gulf uh, or towards, uh, of course, Europe. Uh, of course, there's a lot of migration towards South Africa as well. But it's all doable, so, and uh, there's quite a strong network of uh, traffickers and smugglers, which I th I think is, has been extremely difficult for most of these countries to, to manage uh, because you see a lot of irregular migration. Uh, our estimate, at least in Ethiopia, was uh, it might be double the figure of regular migration, so we, which is quite significant. Uh, so that puts uh, put the region in a very challenging situation. Um, I think one of the advantages, of course, with challenge comes the opportunity. Um, so majority of, if you look at the countries in the Eastern Horn of Africa, there's a lot of development in terms of how to govern labor migration uh, that you don't see in some parts of the region, in the, uh, I mean, when you look at Africa wide. So um, that's the advantage we do have. Of course, the, most countries are catching up, they're trying to learn from each other, which is a very good step forward. 
uh, in terms of improving the level of migration governance in their own respective countries. And now more and more they're also starting to work uh, as a region, of course, as a, uh, within the East Africa, as you know. There's the free movement protocol of the EGAD, there's the common market protocol of the EAC. So, uh, of course, the African Union free movement is also um, another uh, umbrella that uh, we, uh, we work with. So there's a lot of uh, positive step forward as well. Among others, creating decent job is one of the aspirations. Um, let alone decent job, even uh, ordinary uh, labor work is very, I mean, uh, it's a nightmare for many of uh, refugees. How do you see this irony? Uh, we, we have uh, heard, uh, we've seen many publications in creating decent jobs for migrants, but uh, there, there are TV announcements of complaints. No, but uh, that's why we have to have a decent work, because uh, if you look at the push factor, majority, uh, if you take, take a country like Ethiopia, uh, I'm not sure if it's always lack of employment. I mean, they might have employment, but you're working poor, you're working, but you don't have the same salary. So you can't even provide for yourself and for your family. So there's still going to be a push factor unless we work towards decent work. When we talk about decent work, it has to be a decent wage as well to be able to at least sustain you and your family, right? So uh, to say uh, even employment is a challenge, uh, let alone uh, decent employment, I think decent employment is what is required because uh, mm -hmm. For the sake of employment, anybody can work, but in terms of employment, uh, as I said, any opportunity they get, they would jump on it. Because that's what we were, were talking about, the, the working poor as well. You work, but you still are poor not to be able to, to survive. So it's, uh, it's critical. It's also critical because when we talk, so, talk about, for example, social security, um, at the end of the day, uh, if there is no form of social security, which is part one of the, the uh, is, uh, issues when we talk about this and work, one of the components we are talking about. Uh, in your old age, what happens to you? Who's going to take care of you? So it's a critical uh, issues that we're talking about. It's not, most tend to look at the decent work as a luxury, but it's not a luxury. It's, it's the need at least to meet the basic needs. So that one, at least if you're working, you should be able to sustain yourself and your family at, while you're working, but as well as when you age. So that you're not a burden on others or you're a burden on the uh, authority. So it's important to have a, a, a decent work uh, because if not, we'll still have employment, but people will still continue to migrate regularly and irregularly as well. Well, uh, the clock is ticking. We we uh, are forced to stop here, but before leaving, any remark that you want to address uh, for partners, maybe for staffs or member countries, whoever, go ahead. Okay, uh, thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, I think one thing I will say is um, uh, sometimes labor migration is seen negatively, but uh, if, if we do manage it properly or govern it properly, it's a win-win situation. It, it, uh, helps the migrant workers, their families, but as well as the country of origin and country of destination. So all actors should collaborate uh, to improve labor migration governance in our region and so that we can see the fruit of migration. Ms. Aida Awal, Chief Technical Advisor, Better Regional Migration Management Program, Air National Labor Organization, ILO Country Office for Ethiopia, Djibouti, Somalia, Sudan and South Sudan. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Dear viewers, this brings you to the end of our edition for today. See you next time with another edition. Bye-bye. Take care. Have a good one.